In this video trailer, we're gonna look at what is a squawk and how can we use and benefit from it. Stay tuned. Hey traders, a very warm welcome to you. If you're new to the channel, hello, consider subscribing. If you are a veteran, thank you for your subscription and your support. All right, so in this video, guys, we're gonna look at what is a squawk and how do you use it? So a squawk generally is an audio feed. You have your headphones on, you have the speakers on. While you're trading, you are being fed information by a team of guys or one guy who are scanning news, who are scanning things for you. So they're your eyes and your ears, you pay them subscription generally, and they will tell you things that are of interest. Some things that might be of interest are breaking news, Something else they might tell you is price level. So you, if you've got an FX squawk, they might say, oh, yen's now breaking the 100 level and you just be aware of it then. And also you're gonna get data announcements and they're often gonna be something like that gives you a heads up pre-announcement and they're gonna give you post announcement figures. So let's look at each one of those, how they can be of value to us and how we could use it if we decide to subscribe to a squawk service. Okay, first thing is breaking news. Breaking news is, a, is one of the more useful things from a squawk. If you haven't got a, a, a news feed, a, a premium news feed, or you haven't got Twitter set up for kind of this thing, because this breaking news can kind of be, you can lose Twitter, there's certain, so certain people on Twitter who will retweet breaking news and you can start to see it spreading. You gotta be a little bit careful because a lot of fake news sometimes, we had the time when uh, as fake news came out, one of the news sites was hacked and it said that President Obama had been injured in a bomb attack, which is complete nonsense. The price of the market kind of rattled a little bit, got a bit concerned, uh, and it turned out to be fake. So you gotta be careful of that. So breaking news can be useful. That could be something like, hey, there's an emergency meeting for the Bank of England. Hey, there's a terrorist attack. Hey, a pipeline's blown up. Hey, uh, we've just got news that, you know, some country is not doing this or doing that. Whatever it may be, could be macro event, could be micro, could be a court case from, uh, you know, thing, someone's died, whatever. You get the point. The idea is some kind of news could come out which affects the market or affects people's perception of the value of that market. And if we get on that news early enough, yes, we can make a profit. The difference between breaking news and scheduled news is that scheduled news, people are waiting for it. Breaking news, everyone's getting at the same time. So we haven't generally got algos, even though algos are programmed to respond to kind of text and stuff and, and make different, uh, uh, different trading decisions based on what they see news flow. The important thing is, is that you can make a judgment. So you can see, let's say you see cable going off the upside, GBP, USD going off the upside. Breaking news says it's gonna be an emergency uh, meeting by the Bank of England or whatever. I'm making this stuff up on the fly, but you get the point. You start to see why something's moving. You start to see what other traders are seeing. You start to see why they're making their decision. And so you can make your decision and say, hey, I'm not gonna fade this because this could go on, or I'm gonna join it because I think that this is good and, it's, and I'm quite early to this and other people are gonna get involved in it as well. I know a lot of people are short on cable, whatever. You add another dimension that you can add the fundamentals and mix it with the technicals to make a decision. So breaking news is useful for that, to either keep you safe, to get you out of something, or to get you into something if you fancy a little bit of a trade based on that momentum, based on that news flow. All right, next thing is price levels. So often the squawks will be watching major currency pairs or major commodities or stock indices or whatever it may be, or stocks, whatever service you subscribe to. And they will then inform you when something is breaking a key level. Now, is this any good? In two minds, you know, I think that if you're focused on one or two things, you don't want to have your attention drawn to something else. And my argument would be, okay, if you did want to trade that anyway, you should have an alert set, you should have your line on your chart, your alert set, and your plan of action. However, you could use a squawk and say, hey, well, these guys will alert me when it gets near to that level or that level, I've got a plan of action for it, I'm gonna wait till I'll be alerted from them. Do you, could you, do you want to rely on this totally? I don't think I'd want to. I think if I had a plan for say trading, if, if you hadn't broke 100 or your 110 or whatever it may be, I would want to see that myself with an alert. Could that be a secondary help? Yes, it could. And could it be handy to have an order alert? Yes, it could. Could that help you if you're trading something else? Possibly. If you're trading, let's say you're trading one currency pair and you hear that another currency pair that's got one of the same a currency is in it that you're trading has broken, it might give you more weight to take a trade a little bit earlier or hang back. So there is some of that. You've got to be careful you're not making too much noise. And a lot of these squawks 
are very mindful of that and they say, hey, listen, we only talk when we think there's some value. We don't just talk all day long. Because some of the squawks that first came out, they were just talking and talking and talking. And so you'd mute the thing and then it wouldn't be any value to you. So then you want to pick a squawk service that actually doesn't talk all the time, but only talks when something is relevant to you. And sometimes you can tick and select what it talks about, what it doesn't. There are different channels you can mute and unmute. But no it's point getting to that. So price levels are something they give you. Now, one of the major things they give you is data announcements. So we have earnings, we have scheduled, they're not earnings specifically, we have economic data. So we have non-farm payrolls, we have interest rate announcements, we have all that kind of stuff that comes out uh, in the day-to-day -day, uh, function of the markets. Now, what they will do is two things. Number one is they will give you a heads up and say, hey, we've got data in five minutes, which is very useful. If you're trading away, you're day trading, and all of a sudden says, hey, five minutes, guys, for non-farm payroll data, guess you should know that already and you probably should have an alarm, but it's an extra insurance policy to say, well, well, I need to make sure I've got my positions flat or I'm comfortable with my positions. I don't want to be stuck in something that's going to whip up and down three or 400 ticks. So that's handy. That's what they do pre-market for you. And post-market, this is where it becomes useful. Post-market, you know whether something's going to be significant data or not. You've got a red flag on it and you say, hey, it's going to be significant. So very often, but very often you won't know what is significant. As a trader, you're like, hey, it's significant. I just don't know what's significant. After the fact, they will say, hey, the jobs came out of this. This was way worse than expected, blah, 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 blah. And the market's going down or the market's going up. However, the market's responding to this. So you can add that fundamental into the technical you see. If you see the market ripping off the upside and they're telling on the score, okay, this is very unusual, weren't expecting that, wow, this is a real blowout number, whatever it may be, you can take that trade more comfortably knowing there's a lot more weight behind it than if it rips off the upside and they're saying, yeah, the number's in line. The number's in line, ripping off the upside is probably just noise. If they're saying, hey, it's major, major good or major, major bad news and the market's moving, you could use that as an extra weight to take your decision that, hey, I'm buying this first pullback because, hey, there's a lot of weight. People are really excited by this. And also, that's one thing. Also, sometimes numbers from less market moving things might be extreme. So you're not going to watch them, uh, listen to them per se. But if it comes out and say, hey, this is really unusual, factory orders or whatever it may be, something less significant is hit, you might then go, okay, well, I know that's going to affect crude or I know it's going to affect this, it's going to affect that. That's worth drawing my attention to that I otherwise wouldn't have looked at because it's not something that I'm, I'm interested in. But because it's so significant and it might bring in money flow, I might want to ride on the coattails of that money flow. So Squawk service, guys. Those are just some of the ways you can use it. Uh, that's what they do. They give you information over audio. The best ones are very selective with it. Give you breaking news. Very handy that for jumping on, on things that are coming out straight away. Price levels. I'm not so sure about that one, as I say. Data announcements. Useful. Pre-data for the heads up. Post-data for kind of analyzing it and being your kind of mini economist on tap. All right, guys. Thumbs up if you like this kind of stuff. See you next one. Take care. Bye-bye.